hey guys first take up here so the m1 macbook pro let's talk about the apple macbook pro with the m1 chip this pro computer has been my daily driver ever since i got it it's well over six months now and i use it for basically everything i edit my videos on it design thumbnails on it write my script on it watch youtube videos on it and sometimes casually watch movies on netflix since the light situation isn't that friendly in my country nigeria I previously used to own the 2012 MacBook Pro and it has saved me a lot. I used it during my school days and it's a laptop that pretty much started my YouTube journey and it took it from zero subscribers to where it is today. I recently decided to upgrade to the latest MacBook Pro with the Apple Silicon chip, aka M1. So the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, how is it? Well for the past 6 months now, it has seen a lot and most times I push it harder than most people would prefer especially for a tiny ultrabook. For reference, my MacBook Pro is sitting somehow in the best model line. My unit has just 8 gigs of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage. This configuration costs about $1,500 or about $800,000 which is a lot of money in Naira because of the current exchange rate. If you are interested, I will have my affiliate links in the description box below. And if you should use the link, it means you are actually supporting the channel. At first, let's talk about the build quality and how it has held up over the past 6 months now. As you all know, basically all Apple products are carefully designed and built with longevity in mind. Even my 9 year old MacBook Pro from 2012 is still in a very decent condition and I can't say the same about some of the Windows machines I used to own in the past. That being said, the MacBook Pro M1 is still in a pristine condition. It is as good as brand new. The build quality is next to none. It is something that I really take good care of and I must say I don't joke with it. One of the design disadvantages should be the speaker grill. It picks up dust every now and then which I assume might even get right inside those tiny holes. This is just me trying to be nitpicky here. I clean it every now and then but despite that the speaker still sounds excellently well. This might very well be the best sounding 13 inch laptop out there, if not the best. One of the reasons I really wanted to get the M1 MacBook Pro was because of all the praises I saw online on how good the battery life is. And oh my god, the battery life on this machine has blown my expectations away. Apart from video editing which would really take a hit on the battery life, I still get up to 7 hours straight on battery power while editing 4K video. This is totally out of proportion. Then if I'm doing casual stuff like web browsing, watching YouTube videos or movies on Netflix, it can take forever before it goes off. I feel like this might be the very best laptop on sale today with the best battery life. For over 6 months now, my battery health is still on 100% and that is because when it's on idle, it doesn't use the battery at all. It puts everything to sleep and waking it up is instant. About the display, the Retina display on the M1 MacBook Pro is very impressive. And coming from my aging 2012 MacBook Pro, it is a huge step in the right direction for me. Sometimes I wonder if it's OLED because of how good it handles black levels and the contrast. The display is very sharp, very accurate because of its 100% Adobe sRGB, DCI-P3 color gamut and through tone. It can also go as bright as 500 nits. It's really really impressive and it is very bright even when you're using it outdoors. There's also less reflectivity or glare. The keyboard on the M1 MacBook Pro is very responsive with decent key travel and in my opinion, it is one of the best keyboard I've ever typed on. The touchpad comes in handy most of the time especially when I'm on Word document for easy word suggestion. If it goes away in the future, I think I'm going to miss it. The trackpad is the best, there is no contest here, nothing on sale today comes close to the trackpad on any MacBook. The speaker sounds great as I said initially and there is absolutely nothing to complain here when it comes to how the speaker sounds. Bass is present, all the sound instruments is clear enough and most times I don't even bother to use my headphones when I'm editing audio or my YouTube videos. The webcam is still a 720p resolution and it is not the best. But with Apple software optimization, it is better than what it used to be. The microphone quality is very impressive, it is very clear and doesn't sound artificial or processed. Take a listen. Hey guys, this is a video and audio quality from the 720p webcam of the MacBook Pro M1. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. The two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port is a pain in the ass because it is just two and it is located on one side which can be a deal breaker for some people. 
when you connect the charger to one of the ports you're left with only one which can be so annoying sometimes and that's where a dongle comes in i got this particular one here for about 60 dollars or about 30,000 naira, and it has been great i've never had any issues with it and it's holding up pretty well so that's about the external features and how it has held up so far now let's talk about how it's handling day-to-day -day tasks which is basically for me about video editing, photo editing or 4K video editing which can be very intensive and demanding and some other light tasks. For basic tasks like web browsing, casual video editing, office work like scripting or general office work, the M1 MacBook Pro doesn't break a single sweat doing those tasks. It is very snappy and I've never encountered any freeze or apps not responding. For photo editing, what I usually do is creating thumbnails for my YouTube videos and some image retouching in Photoshop and the laptop handles it like a charm. The M1 MacBook Pro also does pretty well in 4K video editing and it is very very okay. I edit most times in Apple ProRes 422 or H.264 using Final Cut Pro X. They are mostly 4K footage from my Sony X6400 mirrorless camera and everything feels snappy 90% of the time. But there's a clause. Sometimes when I'm editing 4K footage and you're cutting through multiple stacks in the timeline, the audio will just cut off completely. A simple fix is to close Final Cut Pro or go out of Final Cut Pro and then go do something else then come back in a minute and then the audio returns. Or if you're using a headphone, unplug the headphone and plug it back then, then the audio might come back. It can be so annoying most times and I really wish Apple can easily release a software update to fix this because it still happens up to today. About gaming, I'm not really a gamer and I've never gamed on this machine for once. I've seen online that it can handle some basic games but Apple MacBooks in the past are not generally efficient for gaming so I don't intend to game on this machine. I might do some light gaming in the future but that's not my current use case here. Okay guys, before we proceed, let's talk about our sponsor for today's video which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators and aspiring people who wants to explore new skills and take their creative journey to the next level. With Skillshare, you can never miss out on anything because they offer classes for web development, graphics design, photography, film and video production. So there's something that will always suit your needs. For instance, I just started a new class with Aaron Palabab on how to make engaging videos that attract an audience. Trust me, creating engaging content that will attract a lot of audience isn't an easy fit. So this classes has been more than helpful and if you're just starting out on YouTube, it is one of the classes I would recommend you check out once you sign up on Skillshare. One of the good things about Skillshare is that the videos don't show any ads because it is designed specifically for learning which will allow you to focus more on your creative journey. So if you're a creator or someone who's aspiring to become one, this is a great opportunity for you to click the link in the description and sign up immediately. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, so the first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare membership with full access to all the curated classes. Ok now let's continue with the rest of the video. The M1 chip is very impressive and very efficient but software support is still not as great as it is on the Intel Macs. And some software might not work properly even when you manage to get them to install. For example, I have Audacity installed here which I use for some audio tweaking and not all the features work as it is on my old Intel Mac. Some other softwares like NTF partitioning software that I use in copying files to my window hard drive doesn't work as well. In fact, there are plenty of software that doesn't work correctly with the M1 chip as at the time of making this video. I know a lot of developers are working hard updating their software and app to work with the M1 chip and the lineup has been great so far. However, the Intel Mac still have better support. To sum things up, the M1 MacBook Pro is great for almost everything that I do on it. There are some glitches here and there, some random reboots due to some software incompatibility. This is actually the second time I'm experiencing this on the M1 Mac, whereby the screen is divided into two with different colors. I hope my device is not having any screen issues. And sometimes the display displaying two colors, dividing the display into two. And for my use case, the 8GB variant that I have here is not something that I'm so pleased with. In fact, I regret getting the 8 gigs variant. I would advise you not to buy the version with 8 gigs of RAM if you intend to use it for intensive tasks like 4K video editing or huge size 
of photo editing because you are going to run out of memory most of the time and the computer will freeze and reboot and it can be so annoying to be frank i would advise you to buy the macbook a with m1 with 16 gigs of ram instead of macbook pro with 8 gigs of ram so in conclusion i love the macbook pro m1 because of its wicked fast performance more than impressive battery life which sometimes i don't even remember to charge and that's how good it is i'm so happy with the future of apple silicon if the first generation is this impressive it means the future is bright for all of us at the same time it will push the competition to do better because right now apple is leading and they're not slowing down m1x or m2 is around the corner and i cannot wait to see what it brings to the table that being said i really like this laptop and i will still recommend it to anyone that wants something very powerful without spending too much if we want to factor in the price to performance ratio i think it is the best in its class and it can even beat other high-end laptops out there so that is it guys my long-term review of the apple macbook pro m1 tell me what you think about it in the comment section below what do you think about the m1 chip in general or even the upcoming ones let me know in the comment section below are you a content creator what laptop or computer are you currently using tell me about it in the comment section below if you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you in the next one bye bye